This is fun. I'm going to show you a picture. And it's a picture that appeared in the article which you just saw me, mm -hmm. showed me. Yep. And it talks about, the, in fact, it was an article in the paper that said, some of the original pirates still live here. And they talk about the Celeron Park pirates that had a variety of players like George Goodell, Johnny Pollock, manager Mickey LaLange. And they talk about Clay Rugg, who was an original club's treasurer. Stuart McGuire talks about Bill Broadhead. And then a guy named James F. Matthews. F is wrong. It's S. S. <laughs> S and Samuel. Samuel, there you go. And we're talking about the 1939 professional team in the Pony League representing Jamestown. It's the first team. How does a Jim Matthews possibly get involved in baseball? Well, my brother was Wid Matthews, uh, who played professional baseball back in, oh, well, he played with, uh, against Babe Ruth in that area. He was in the majors only about parts of three years with the Washington Senators and Philadelphia Athletics. Later on, he uh, played with Indianapolis, Indiana Indians for a number of years. And as a kid growing up in Southern Illinois, uh, I had the opportunity of visiting him for a couple of three weeks in the summertime for about four years. Mm -hmm. So I always loved baseball. And uh, sort of in my blood, so to speak. And at some point, you get into a position as an administrator. How did a 21-year-old get involved in that? No one, my brother, basically. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, um, I did get involved in it through, with in 1937, I think. Uh, I worked for the Cardinal Concessions. They decided that all our farm clubs would be a good idea if, if they ran them through a head man in St. Louis. Well, through Wed, he hired me to run the concessions in Johnson City, Tennessee for one summer which I did. And then the following summer, uh, uh, I had an opportunity to go to Pocatello, Idaho, or Albany, Georgia, to do the concession. So I chose Albany, Georgia. So I went down there early because they needed somebody to sell advertising on their scorecard, which I did. And then, of course, when the season started, uh, um, I did my job as uh, concession manager. And that was in early May. And then all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, um, later May, I got a call from Wed that said they were looking for a man to go up to Jamestown to take over a club up there. The pitch, but, uh, Pittsburgh was going to take over, and I guess. I don't know the real story on that, except 
I suspect that uh, uh, Pittsburgh contacted uh, Branch Rickey uh, and through Branch Rickey and Wed, who worked for Rick at that time as a, a, a scout. And I guess Wed mentioned me as a possibility, so they offered me the job and I took it with no experience. <laughs> when you first came into Jamestown, New York, did you know anything about it at all? Uh, I knew baseball pretty well, right. but I didn't know anything about running a, a, a baseball club from a business end. But uh, I got a quick history from Oliver French. Mm -hmm. And Oliver French came down and gave me a one-day lesson in what to do and how to report to the league and, and uh, stuff that the, the club would need to do to operate in the league. Now, Oliver French was who? He was general manager of the Rochester Red Wings in the Cardinal chain. Okay, so he came down and gave you a little tutorial. He did. And at the time, did you did you meet Stuart McGuire? Is that a name that means anything to you? It means something to me, but I didn't meet him right then. Okay. Stuart McGuire was the, I think, he was the Post Journal uh, sports editor. Mm -hmm. What was your impression of Stuart McGuire? Can I be liable? <laughs> no, no. Actually, he's been dead for 60 years. Well, uh... And what you say will not change our view of him at all. <laughs> I worked uh, well with the uh, assistant sport editor at the paper. I can't think of his name. But I used to go in at night and I'd help write the article sometimes mm -hmm. about what happened during that during the game. And uh, I knew who Stuart McGar was, but one day he approached me at Celeron Park and suggested that it would be a good idea if I put him on the payroll as a publicity director. Oh, really? And uh, I don't know if I was smart or dumb, but I said, no, if we don't need a publicity director, I can do my own. Sure. Uh, he was a little peeved about that. As I recollect. Sure. Why do you say he had a drinking problem as well? Yeah, yeah, I knew that from what uh, his friends had told me. Yeah. In our research, Stuart McGuire was the guy who laid down the initial money to get the team a franchise for the team. Uh, and then had to, shortly thereafter, after it got started, uh, give it to a guy named William Broadhead. Does that, is that a name that's familiar to you? No. Uh, so you, you came in on behalf of the Pittsburgh Pirates to really manage the team for 19, or be the business manager for the team for 1939. What kind of expectations did they give you, if any? Uh, I spent probably an hour with uh, the president of the Pittsburgh club in his office. And uh, he just told me about the general thing that they were taking over this club. And uh, I can't really recall much of the conversations. Was Mr. Dreyfus, he wasn't alive then, was he? Barney Dreyfus? Uh, he might have been, but this fellow was Bill Benswinger, ben Swinger. who was uh, president of the club. So. And while he the, might have been re related to Dreyfus or, oh, yeah. or his 
it seemed like he was somehow part of the family. Yeah, he married well. <laughs> yeah. He married Barney's daughter. And so they sent you on your way to Jamestown, New York. Where did you stay when you were in Jamestown? I found a home on one of the streets. Uh, the lady was, a, I believe, a widow. She had a couple of rooms for rent. I couldn't find a place now if I had to. Yeah. But it was a nice room with a bath and no meals or anything, just a... But it was in Jamestown. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the ballpark was in Celeron, New York. Right. Um, the park, which had, the, the, the bar, park had been created in the, around the turn of the century. How did you find the condition of the park in 1939? It's very difficult to describe. Uh, I played uh, sandlot baseball, town team baseball when I was younger. And uh, I never played on a, in a field that was worse than Celeron Park. I don't think you were alone. Um. Tell me about the park. If you had to close your eyes and describe the park looking out to the lake, how would you describe it? Scenery was wonderful. Yeah. You had big trees in the left left field and the lake behind it and no fence, no, uh, no outfield fences. Mm -hmm. And the right field was a little closer and it seems like there was Some sort of a building out beyond the right field thing, but it wasn't too much. It didn't interfere with the team, the game at all. It might have been some kind of a wire fence up there, also. But the uh, infield was, of course, a skin diamond, but it, it it didn't have any space for the shortstop or the second baseman to operate in it. It just ended from base to base. And uh, the outfield was rather rough. I know the guys that played it out there complained. But the worst part was the place for the people to sit. Mm -hmm. The stands were old and there was no bathrooms. Uh, there wasn't any porta potties or anything like that in the park. Of course, outside the fence, uh, there was the park itself. Mm -hmm. They had facilities. I'll show you a couple of pictures just to kind of uh, fresh your recollections here. These are a little older pictures than when you were there, but it gives you a sense of it. See if that looks familiar. It didn't look that good right? out in the, in the distance when I was there. I remember that old roller coaster thing. This looks a lot better than I ever saw, I guarantee you. <laughs> I think that was a turn of the century. Yeah. 
it was decaying, decaying badly by the time we got there. Remember the manager of the team? Mickey. Mickey? Yep. Thank you. What was he like? Uh, he's a... He was an old ball player. Just player. like an old ball player, and he was a, a catcher. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had nubs for fingers. And uh, did he get along well with the players? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you a list of some of the names that I'm looking at on an old scorecard to see if you have any recollection of these guys. Uh, Marvin Peterson. Let's see. This would be you know, Merlin Peterson. Yeah. Does that name ring a bell? Yeah. We played basketball that winter. Is that right? Yeah. Were you there the whole year, or just just? I was there that following winter. Were you? And then, at at the end of the season, the Pirates made a decision to move the team. Did you go with it? Yep. And where did you go? London, Ontario. London. Were you there the second year there? Yeah. That probably wasn't a tough decision for Pittsburgh to make. No. Yeah. I uh, I may have triggered it, but I didn't make it. Well, there's the story. Yeah. How did you trigger it? Well, I knew, knew the newspaper guys pretty well, right. besides Stewart. And I guess I uh, had a conversation with them, and I indicated that I didn't think uh, Pittsburgh would want to come, come back there, and play at Celeron Park. I know there was an article in the paper about it, and I guess that upset the owner of Celeron Park, because he was rather friendly before, but he wasn't very friendly afterwards. Who was the owner then? Was Maltby still the owner? No, he fell, well, I, don't, I say owner. I think he was the owner. He certainly was a manager. Right. That was Campbell. Okay. So uh, it was reported in the paper. Next thing you know, he's not a happy guy. How did the Pirates react to this? Did the Pirates call you and say, No. What, what, are, you what are you doing? No. They didn't. Did you have to send out down weekly reports to the Pirates? How, how did you keep in touch with them? No, I sent uh, daily reports to the league mm -hmm. on what was our attendance was. Uh, well, one, I, I didn't have too much contact directly with Pittsburgh, but they had a, uh, like all, all the teams, they had a fellow that was director of their minor league team. That was Joe Schultz. Okay. And Joe would come through uh, periodically and see how things were going. So he probably had just as much to do about the club leaving as anybody, yeah. because he could see the what we had there. And also, we were fortunate enough to have the Pittsburgh Pirates come in for an exhibition game. Tell me about that. I've read about that. That, yeah. that must have been something. Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, uh, of course they had the Weiner brothers, mm -hmm. and that was a great thrill just to meet those guys. So they came in and they, I can't recall if they stayed at a hotel in uh, Jamestown or not. I not, don't think they did, but they came out at the park all dressed their uniforms, which all the players did because there was no place to dress there. Right. And uh, they, they took a look at 
the park, and uh, I didn't hear any direct quotes, quotes from them. But uh, I don't think they ever wanted to come back. Yeah. The pirate team had as its one of its coaches, Hannes Wagner. Uh, when I came from meeting with Pittsburgh, my initial visit, uh, Honus Wagner was coming up at the same time. Uh, I think he was heading for Buffalo, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. to make a speech. So we rode on the same train together. Nope, what a thrill. And, oh, yeah. And we sat in the ball game uh, uh, watching the parts play until about the seventh inning. And I can remember him telling me that one of the Pittsburgh guys was a bat and uh, I forget what happened. He, he didn't operate the way Mr. Wagner would. Yeah. He said, I would have just waited for that outside pitch and I would have just punched it out into right field. I wasn't smart enough to get his autograph either. Well, you probably weren't smart enough to ask him to see if he had any of those old baseball cards either. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, I understand. That, that's number one. That's, that's, the, that's the holy grail in that world. <clears throat> but he was a very interesting man. Well, what a thrill. So when the Pirates come to Selwyn Park, was there a big crowd that day? Do you remember? I just, it was filled, I would say. Yeah. As, as I recall, the Pirates also had Pie Trainer. Yep. And Archie Vaughn. So when you think a little old Celeron Park had five, at least five, Hall of Famers. Yes, they did. Wow. And you no doubt were responsible for making that happen. More or less, I guess. I. Uh, I can't recall, recall the exact thing, but I did mention to Mr. Benslinger if at one time or the other, if, and maybe Campbell had something to do with it too. I have to give him credit also. Yeah, he's not around right now, so you yeah. can take full credit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, really in the history of Jamestown baseball to have a team, to have that one event occur. It was quite remarkable. Uh, some of the other ball players that were on the team, uh, again, I'll, I'll mention some names, but if, if there's a story or two that might happen to jump out, I'd love to hear it, such as um, George Goodell, Leo Murray, Eddie Welch. Uh, do you want to list the names? Do you want to Okay, I'll just stop. If you have something like George Goodell, do you have any recollections of George? Yeah, he was, uh, of course, I knew he was a Jamestown boy, and his father was a dentist. I knew his father had quite a bit to do with getting the club started, mm -hmm. because I know he had some stock in the club that didn't mean anything, of course. But I did visit his office after the season to, I think, to see if he wanted to turn that stock over or what, but I don't recall anything ever happening, or needed to happen, actually. Yeah. Anything you may call on uh, Leo Murray? Yeah. Uh, he was a young left-handed pitcher from Boston mm -hmm. and had a Great fastball and was wild, but he was a good kid. Uh, I doubt if he ever made it too far in in baseball, but he shook the batters up. I know that. He <laughs> kept them loose, huh? Yeah. How about Eddie Welch? Not too much. Eddie was seemed like a, I recall, a very quiet young fellow and good good pitcher. Paul Peterson? 
No, I don't remember him at all. Art Watson? Art, I do. He was a left-hander from, I believe, somewhere down in Pennsylvania. And uh, had a pretty good curveball. Joe Black? Yeah, there was two Blacks. Mm -hmm. Bill Black and Joe. They weren't related. Uh, Joe had changed his name. It was some name like Blah or something like that. <laughs> so for purposes of better publicity, I guess, he changed his name to Black. He was, uh, in those days, uh, he, he pitched some good innings for us. Bill Black was uh, sort of the senior member of the club. And uh, if the baseball team has a spokesman, why? Well, he was more or less a spokesman. And he was a pitcher also? Also. Yeah. I forget which Black signed that picture. Picture you did, and uh, uh, at the top was it Bill Black? Yeah, that's Bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bill came down to the ballpark a couple years ago. He did. Shocked everybody. He says, you know, hi, I pitched the first year, 1939. Of course, nobody had a clue. So they called me. They said, we got this Bill Black here who says, claims to pitch the first year. And I said, he is. He's legit. <laughs> keep, keep him there. Don't let him go. <laughs> so I went down and did exactly what I did with doing with you. Yeah, very so nice. He was... Uh, from Pennsylvania, Warren, Pennsylvania, his, took his granddaughter up and said, I want to show you Jamestown. And of course, he pitched his cell run, but long since gone, but uh, he came down there. But that was Bill Black. Uh, Stan Zatoski? Zatoski, I was, I thought it was spelled with a U, but I say it's spelled with an A. Uh, he was pitching for uh, Olean mm -hmm. and got released. And he came over to Jamestown to see if he could get a job. And uh, I talked to Mickey, and we had a spot, so we signed him. And you would actually sign the contracts, Jim? Yeah. Okay. On behalf of the Pirates? Yeah. And he had, uh, he actually was the best pitcher we had, I thought. What about Johnny Pollock? Vaguely remember him. He was, he was a catcher, catcher of experience. Uh, um, probably played a lot of baseball, mm -hmm. but it's one of those things where some scout had a young phenom, you know, and signed him, and they had to put him somewhere. So when he came in, that sort of pushed John out, as I recall. How about the name Ralph Me? Remember me? No. Herb Cam? Herb Cam I knew very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was a Buffalo boy. Uh, good looking, sort of big, good hit a ball a mile. Not too fast. Uh, Bobby Barnhart? Dad was a old pirate, mm -hmm. and uh, Bob played third base. Had a younger brother, Vic, who came up and visited. Mm -hmm. So the following year, uh, we had Vic and Bobby at London. Vic played shortstop, Bob, <coughs> Bob played third base. And I think Vic was uh, it went about the highest. Well, Johnny Lucan did too. Uh, uh, in the majors from that group of guys. Let's talk about Johnny Lucan. He's the next on the list here. Uh, very quiet young man and uh, good fielder. Could hit when he when you needed him. I know he played later on. And uh, during the war, I believe, at shortstop, somewhere, 
might have been Pittsburgh, might have been somewhere else. How about Merlin Peterson? Yeah, he was the guy that I played yeah. basketball with. Of course, you were better than he, wasn't he? Oh, he's pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, well, that's basketball. I'll mention that later. Chuck Taylor? Yeah. Chuck was a better fighter than he was a ball player. A fighter, huh? If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on this. Mm -hmm. I think that he became a fighter and fought for the championship. He was always ready to fight when he had a baseball okay. uniform on, I know. Let me see if I can find that little picture here. Surely they got some of these old, practically all I had. That's that's the one, the only one I got. Uh, Chuck, but I, I made a note on the back. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, okay. I, uh, Sound here. Okay. Anyway, uh, I think he was the guy that went on and fought for a middleweight championship later. Yeah, well, that's what you have here, and I've got to believe it was exactly what happened. Uh, there. Um, continuing on to the list, he's doing a great job. What do you mean he had no memory? By the way, Barnhart, was this Bobby Barnhart's dad? Was that Clyde Barnhart? That was him. Okay. Um, Eddie Carmichael. Is that ringing a bell? Oh, yeah. Great kid. If you look in the, the book of statistics, on baseball, you should find his name in 1938 listing on minor leagues. I think he led the minor leagues in hitting uh, with some some club. Must, must have been a big number, huh? Is his name Paul Wiskup? Yep. He was a Buffalo boy that was a pitcher and not 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 a great well he was he wasn't even real he wasn't even a real good pitcher, but he was a heck of a nice kid. Uh, heck of a good bowler because I bowled with him that winter. Man, he played with everybody. <laughs> uh, Ray Ray Lawrence. Ray came in late. He was sent in by one of the scouts, and I think he came down from a higher club. He was, he was a little more mature than some of the kids we had. Hank Bizanti? Buz, Buzzanati. Well, Buzzanati, well, I've yeah. that one. Big Italian boy from Pennsylvania. Coal mines, I think, and uh, very raw. But he could hit a ball a mile when he hit it. There was a guy named Perchek. Last name's Perchek. Don't remember him. Uh, a shortstop by the name of Lang. Oh yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have his first name. I don't recall Lang coming into Jamestown, though. I'm pretty sure I had a Lang up in London. And there's a guy named James Matthews. 
I did what? <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever go out on the batting cage and just bang away? We didn't have a batting cage. Did you take batting practice at all? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'd pitch some. Did you? So what was a normal day for Jim Matthews? Well, when were games? What, what, were they afternoon games? Oh, yeah. What time? I think we played, tried to play them late in the afternoon so that uh, they became more like twilight games, except on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And what was the, what was the normal attendance? I don't think we had a normal attendance. It was, uh, during the week it would be very low. And then um, get better for the weekends. But we had, you know, 100, sometimes 200 people. What was admission? As I recall, it was about a quarter. I'm going to give to you a. This is a program from that year. And uh, were you responsible also for getting advertising? And no, I was not. Yeah. That was all done the, before I got there, yeah. I see it laying down there, but I sure don't remember it down there. They probably made an error one day and you got rid of them. No, I didn't, I didn't have authority to do that. <laughs> this guy is probably pretty ruthless, we don't know. Does the name Eddie Turchin? Was he with you? You know what? Forget that. He was with uh, Batavia. He was with Batavia. Um, L. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple other names. Sure. Uh, uh, L. Mucha. Mucha. Uh, what do I think happened? I'm looking at some Les James. Yeah, yeah. Les was, I believe, in Jamestown, mm -hmm. but uh, I believe he he went before I got down there. I think what might have happened. I'm, I'm looking at a bunch of names here. Their first game while they before the Pirates, they won, and they had guys like Joe Elcada, Paul Gasanovic, David Kena, Chuck Ireland, Ronnie Dolman, Ralph Mee, Bill Sicarelli, Al Christ, Al Bolson. No, yeah. Now wait a minute. Chris stayed with us Did he? at the start, but he got released uh, mid-season. He was from Henrietta up in near Rochester, mm -hmm. and uh, I knew him from when uh, I was at. Johnson City, Tennessee. Uh, he he pitched for the Johnson City Club. And his brother was Howie Chris, but was a major league pitcher for a number of years. Uh, Chet Walrod. You see. mentioned the name Alicata. Yeah. His name was Joe L. Okada, yeah. Joe Okada. A little bit. I think he stuck with us. See, all these players we had uh, in this picture didn't all come in at once. Oh, they were fed in. So some of those fellows that were on the original club stuck around for a while. And they weren't sent away necessarily because of their ability. It was just a case of filled your team with 
kids that the scouts knew, I guess. Well, I think that's what probably happened. The early team was loaded with a lot of local guys. Yeah. And then when you the Pirates took over, they brought their players in and sort of filtered its way through, it looks like. Because uh, I remember some of these guys when I was a kid. Um, some state, obviously, Merlin, Peterson State, George Goodell. Uh, some came and went. What did you guys do for socially? What was your social life like at age 21 in Jamestown, New York? If you want to talk about it. She's taking notes. You talk about well, I like the brown bear. Brown bear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was nice. And uh, there was a diner right down the street from there. That I like to go over to eat. And... Uh, Gretchen's Kitchen. I don't know how long that lasted. Where were they? they were all in Jamestown? Yeah. yeah. And that's where I met my first wife, mm -hmm. Gretchen's Kitchen. She was a waitress there. Uh, <coughs> how did you get from Jamestown to Selrod? Take the trolley or trolley. trolley? Yeah. Where would you pick it up? Do you remember? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah. I probably downtown somewhere. I knew I I walked. Uh, I didn't have a car, so I either. Rode the trolley or walked or hitched a ride or whatever. Did you, uh, you stayed in James, I'm just curious because when the season ended, did you know at the end of 1939 that you were moving or did it, was it during the fall or winter of 39 and 40 where that decision was made? It was in the winter of 39 okay. and I, I don't really remember when the decision was made. Probably made at the minor league conference when they had that. Since you stayed in Jamestown during that time period, was there any movement afoot you recall about building a new stadium? No. no. One of the reactions of your departure, of you leaving, was the, the, the knowledge that the stadium was awful. And that's when they decided they better build a decent stadium in Jamestown. A guy like Ernie Kessler, does that name ring a bell with you? Or Judge Barger? Well, the fellow that I knew most in Jamestown that was a fellow named Harold Bustrom, okay. who was somewhere in city government, can't recall his job, but he was the vice president of the club. So I, I got better acquainted with him and he, he knew what was going on pretty much. Yeah. When you then, you took the team to London in the New York Penn League. Uh, what kind of stadium setup was up there in London? They had a great stadium. Great stadium? Yeah. Very nice facility. And you stayed there in 1940. Then, did you stay there after that? No, no there was a war going on. Right. And uh, they were already putting up sandbags around the corners mm -hmm. of the streets and stuff. Uh, by that time, I'd gotten married. Mm -hmm. And uh, expecting a child in November. So I had, the, this was only a summer job. Right. So I had to go to work. And where was that? Well, eventually it ended up at uh, Rochester Products, which was the General Motors plant. Where I stayed 38 years. Oh my gosh. But before then, the, Meantime, I worked at a department store selling Hickok belts 
And I worked uh, in a factory uh, making uh, electric fans. I think I just about covered it. Did I tell you anything else? <laughs> the Hickox belt, of course, they got to be very famous as the annual big prize for the yeah. Athlete of the Year. Yeah, I got to go to a couple of those. You ever put the belt on just to... No. <laughs> I didn't sell those kind of belts. <laughs> <coughs> that was a big deal. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> the Hickok Belt dinners, you know, everybody watched those. And yeah. You, because I think what they did, wouldn't they have a monthly selection of the athlete of the month, as I recall, and then they'd bring all 12 together, and one of those 12 would be the athlete of the year, and they'd get the Hickok Belt and probably some money. Uh, as you reflect back on your one year in Jamestown, New York, uh, did it, did it teach you any lessons? Was there any life lessons from that one year's experience? Your first year as a, in essence, the general manager of a baseball team. Ah, well, at the time I was just going with the flow, you know. Later on, I, I, uh, in reflection, I said I should have been better prepared. Mm -hmm. Were there, what was the big surprise, if you can recall, that year? Anything that just sort of jumped out and said, gee, this was one I could not have anticipated? Oh, fan, I can't think of any. Yeah. You know, at 50 years, Ago, some of that's like a blur, you know. Well, try 70 years ago. <laughs> 70 years ago. <laughs> this is amazing. You had tremendous, <laughs> tremendous recall. This is a, just amazing, amazing stuff, Jim. Uh, did the name Harry Bizguyer mean anything to you? He was the owner of the Niagara Falls team in the league. Did your paths, would that have crossed with Harry's? I met him, that's it. Yeah. In fact, uh, You've probably got the picture somewhere, a meeting we had. Uh, Watch. Oh, this one here. James Matthews. I was young. <laughs> That's amazing. I have not seen that picture. I will be. I'll, I'll try to take a picture of it before I get out of here. That's terrific. What if I have failed to ask you? What should I have asked him? What's the question? He talks about when, when he knew I was coming. He said, "I hope he doesn't ask that question." No, he just said, "I hope I can recall a lot of my." I, We've talked about the Pirates, we've talked about how you got started, uh, and then after 1940 you kind of get out of the game. Yep. And our first general manager in the history of professional baseball in Jamestown, New York, James <laughs> Matthews. Wow. Maybe next year we'll give you a ticker tape parade in Jamestown. <laughs> And we'll, we'll have you ride around with, with Bill Black. Yeah, that'd be all right. Yeah. This is terrific. I can't tell you how excited I am to, 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 to pause and get the story, which we, were, we got some of last time, but I didn't get this machine working. That was my problem. Uh, and here we are five years later. Uh, this, is, this is great, Jim. And frankly, he hasn't changed one iota. You may think you have, but in my eyes, you haven't. I do recall one instance uh, 
When uh, Mickey didn't stay in Jamestown, he commuted from Buffalo for each game. Mm -hmm. He'd drive down for the game. And after the game was over, he'd drive home. Uh, well, one, one time we went to Bradford and he, uh, he was either sick, had car trouble, or something, he couldn't get to the game. So uh, I sat on the bench in street clothes. And technically, I was running the club, but actually, Bill Black was doing it for me. Right. And I remember uh, uh, the pitcher for Bradford that day, I think, was a guy named Warren Spahn. Really? Yeah. And uh, not sure where, where did it, what was his, remember his history? Did he come out of Buffalo? He came out of, came out of Buffalo, absolutely. He came out of Buffalo yeah. and, and was signed by the Braves. He, he came out of Buffalo. Yeah. And uh, I knew he had a good high school record. Well, he took care of us, no problem. <laughs> did he have the high kick then? Did, did you recall that, any of that at all? Because that was his big thing was to have that high leg kick. And I don't remember. I just remember our guys coming back to the bench saying, boy, he's tough. <laughs> yeah. Was Sal Magley in the league then? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Niagara Falls. Yeah. I thought he was 40 years old then. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any other players of that you recall other than the other teams that mentioned Spawn and Magley and Well, Don Richmond uh, for Batavia right. went on and played uh, Major League Ball, and I guess the park in Batavia is named for him. Mm -hmm. I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Well, interestingly enough, the, the playoffs are going on in the New York Penn League right now, and the two teams that are playing at Jamestown and Batavia. Oh. Just like the old days. Literally the very first game of Jamestown history was against Batavia in 1939. Uh, <coughs> small world that they're still, still at it. Oh, Hamilton, Ontario was in the league. And Olean? <laughs> Did Olean have Jake uh, Pittler then? Yeah. All right, talk to me about Jake Pittler. Uh, funny guy. I, uh, I think he knew my brother. Did he? He called me Matty all the time. Um, funny but smart. He was, of course, I wasn't around him that much, but enough to call him Jake. Well, he was a crowd favorite in Jamestown. Yeah, yeah. anywhere he went, I think. Johnny Newman. Does that mean anything to you? No, I don't think so. He was our Babe Ruth in Jamestown. He, he came up in 1940 in Jamestown, so your paths may, may or may not have crossed at that time. In fact, do you, do you have any memory at all coming to Jamestown and playing in Allen Park? When you were in London, coming to play Jamestown, 19, what happened in 1940, Niagara Falls moved halfway through the season to Jamestown. They had a stadium, which was <coughs> an old kind of... <coughs> Sandlot. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm just getting over bron bronchitis here. You know, vaguely, and not to mention that uh, <clears throat> I think I have a vague memory of it, but I, I don't remember anything about it. 
we it was just a half a season and it yeah. happened to be where I near where I live so it was it was of interest to me well because you always heard about playing baseball at this particular sandlot um, in fact if you have a program of playing in Jamestown New York at Allen Park that is our holy grail really that is the missing program no, I have none. No. <laughs> Did you keep anything from your days uh, as a business manager of Jamestown? No, just that's what we met some pieces. We she's my genealogist and see, you're the keeper a, of the goodies here, huh? Yeah. Not much. Would the pirates have saved anything? No. We were just a little Little bitty island. So during your winters, you were bowling, you were playing basketball. What else kept you busy? Eating. That's about it. Yeah. We played in. Uh, we had a sponsor out of a fellow I knew out of Buffalo sponsored the basketball team. Bought uniforms. We played in a, a Y league. And I, I think we were the top team in the league we were in. I had Merlin Peterson and uh, some guy that was a well-known player in James. I can't think of his name now. He was good. I was going to ask you. Seemed like it was somebody else besides Peterson. That's a good name. Uh, did you have any problems being 21 years old, general manager, in charge of the checks, and, mess, and, and you're the general manager of people older than you? Did anybody ever muscle themselves around saying, you little whippersnapper? Did you get any of that feedback? No, I was 6'2", about 200 pounds, and I didn't, I didn't get muscle too much. <laughs> No, no lip or anything from these older guys? No. Okay. Just curious about that. I can't tell you how much fun this has been. Have you had an opportunity to meet uh, other, uh, like, was it Ricky? Brian Ricky? Yeah, I met him once, yeah. Meet him? I, I told him how to feed his chickens. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, <coughs> my brother was out of baseball for in business between when he finally quit playing about 1932. He went down to a little town in Missouri called Crothersville. Mm -hmm. Well, then later, then about 30. Seven somewhere in there, Crossville got a baseball team in the Arkansas, Missouri Class D league, and they had transferred a team down from a little town upstate down to Crossville, and the Cardinals had some prospects on there. One of them was Whitey Karoski. Mm -hmm. sure. Anyway, Wood got involved with a team. Uh, there was some something going on with a transfer. And the Cardinals were about to lose those players, ownership of them, or contract of them. And somehow he stepped in there and got that straightened out. So he went up to St. Louis to uh, see Ricky. Now, Ricky knew him from years ago when he played. Right. Um, and Ricky said, uh, can you do some part-time scouting for me? And Wood said, well, yeah, I think I could, because he would referee basketball games and stuff. So he got doing that maybe take a week or two trips somewhere. And eventually he led to 
full-time job. So then when Ricky went to Brooklyn, he went with him, his top, one of his top scouts. Well, this is a whole story unto itself. Holy cow. <coughs> but somewhere I lost what I was going. Where I was. Feeding the chickens? Maybe feeding the chickens. <laughs> anyway. Farm systems. There we go. <clears throat> One winter, we, uh, he had to drive up to see Ricky. And I went with him. I was, well, I was, I think I'd finished my, First year of agriculture in at, at Arkansas State, <coughs> and, and Ricky was owned this out this house and farm outside the city limits, and he did have some chickens there, <laughs> and they were f feeding them. Uh, some kind of liquid in a in a tin tin dish, and uh, we were taught that <coughs> you know you have to use crocs because the uh, somehow the metal would uh, corrode and that would mess up your chickens. That this is really vague now. <laughs> So, I was introduced to him, we were talking about his farm. I mentioned that he probably ought to use crocs down there to set a tin. <laughs> well, there you go. See, he needed you. You're right. He gave you advice. That led to your career in baseball. He interviewed me. I think that's when I got the job of working in this concession group. I wonder if I smoke, no sir. Do you drink, no sir. That, that was, those were common questions that he made. Right. And so you ended up in the concessions, and that, of course, led to you being uh, yeah. the first general manager in Pittsburgh. So that chicken story made the difference. <laughs> That's where it all comes together. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear to me. Oh, darn it. That's perfect. Well, indirect me a letter to her. And there you and go. Forty some odd years. That's. Uh, that's worth it. Absolutely. <coughs> that comes full circle. Well, thank you, Jim. This was just terrific. And thank you for it's letting nice me... It's nice to have you come. Well, it's great. I'm going to give you an assignment, though. It's, it's, cause there's some... Oh, you want that picture? Well, copies. At some point, I'll pay for the copies and stuff. I can just make it on our copy. Oh, could you? Yeah, because I've never seen okay. some of these things. Sure. That would be terrible. <coughs> <coughs> um,